Welcome to Creativity, the podcast where art and engineering collide. My name is Jeremy S. Cook, and my co-host is Max Maker. Hi, everybody. Today, we're, we don't have actually any guests. It's just going to be me and Max, but I actually, Max has been moving, so you've been doing a lot of lot of crazy stuff, I'm sure, right? Oh, yeah. We've, and, we've got plenty of stuff to talk about. Absolutely. And then, then I just got back from the New York Maker Fair, so I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff, so... Anyway, so uh, so Max, what uh, I guess, what have you been up to? Yeah, well, it was a really busy summer. Uh, I moved into a new flat, a new apartment. I'm really happy that I moved because it's a nice place. Uh, but it was a lot of work, of course. Um, I also moved to workshops, so now my workshop is just underneath uh, my living room in the basement, and I've got a two uh, two car parking slot space for all my tools. And of course, I can also work in front of the. Uh, car parking spot it's like an underground garage but it's just for the people that live in the house so it's uh two parties of which one is my sister so she's not stealing my tools and the <laughs> other one he's a surgeon uh, surgeon surgeon yeah surgeon yeah yeah he yeah he cuts open hands and oh well them. that's hopefully he doesn't so cut I, I, your hand doesn't have to yeah practice. well i i think if i i don't need a saw stab now because I, I can fix it in-house <laughs> I cut off my finger. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't good. think he will steal my tools. And yeah, moving in was a lot of work there. You uh, know, maybe you but... could get his uh, old tools. You know, some um, what are the the picks that you wanted to get at uh, Harbor Freight? I guess that you didn't. Oh yeah, those those ceiling ceiling uh, O ring ceiling pin uh, picks. I mean, you got to think he probably nice. comes across some very high quality, very specialized tools that might be, you know, that he has to throw away afterwards or something. Yeah, like these uh, the scalpels. How are they called for 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 making? Uh, uh, hobby oh, exacto knife? knives. Hobby knives. Exacto yeah. knives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you'd feel about cutting open a piece of cork or whatever after you've, you know, knowing uh, that it's mind. cut open somebody's hand. So. I don't mind. I, I was talking to the surgeon yesterday, and he said like, "Well, I'm I'm cutting open hands all day, and it's a little bit," uh, and I'm like. What's uh, about that? Every other surgeon job is worse than cutting open hands, I think. Yeah, I agree with that because it's, to me, you know, I, I find blood and stuff like that very disgusting. But, you know, if I had to cut something open, a hand's a lot better than a heart or a brain or oh, yeah. even a knee or something, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that I, I have no experience with this as I, I assume you don't either, so. Uh, no. But I can tell everybody, if you try to cut off a zip, uh, a zip tie, you should really go for your um, wire, uh, your, your, your wire snips. And don't use scissors because they can get stuck in your thumb by accident. Oh, <laughs> did you have to have stitches for that or was that a... Uh, yeah, I did. Was that a... Was that a um cyanoacrylic glue glue job <laughs> no i went to the hospital i spent three hours in hospital for that <laughs> uh, it's just a wait time but yeah, it's okay it was for fun. free because because we've got healthcare in germany but let's not go into that topic <laughs> sure sure <laughs> well that's i mean yeah let's not go into the topic i guess so you've been to make a fair hurt yeah that's right my make um, fair new york make your fair new york so that's one of the big i guess one of the what do they call it uh Headline shows. And anyway, it's one one of the big ones. I guess the one in yeah. the Bay Area, Bay Area is, is probably the biggest one. And then New York is one of the bigger bigger ones. It was, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was, I guess the coolest thing was just getting to meet some of the people that I work, in, I say work with. You know, I guess I do work well, with yeah. them. Well, yeah, we did yeah. work with them. Who did you meet? Peter so, Brown. Yeah, I did not meet Peter Brown, but um, I met Laura Kampf and that's uh that was pretty oh, cool, nice. just because we got to we got to interview her a, a few a few episodes ago. So she was she was very nice, and she was I, I guess exactly what I expected. She had on her uh, her trademark uh, kind of black hat, I guess. So as you know, yeah. And she just I, I guess when you're kind of a a star and star, I guess that, that's a legitimate term for she her. She is a star. She is so, a star. Tra trying to <clears throat> what's the word? You know, you're trying to identify as yourself. You should probably have on the stuff you usually wear, right? I guess that makes it a little easier. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I didn't see him, but I guess Ab Adam Savage was there. Ah, um, uh. yeah. I don't. I actually don't know where he was. I think he was supposed to speak or something, but I, I guess I was somewhere somewhere else at the time. 
<laughs> and um, Bob Claggett was there. I, I saw him running around. And then, oh, cool. Um, Do you say hello? No, I didn't. I didn't say hello. He's. Um, I mean, he wasn't. What's the word? It wasn't like he was in a position where I could just say, "Hey, how are you?" So, yeah, um, of oh, course. Well, it's Jimmy, a busy. It's a busy fair, and it's in New York, so. Sure. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like one of those things. Like, you don't want to just run up to people, even though you know who they are. I, I guess. Oh, William Osman. I saw him running around and stuff, and he was. It's kind of weird. My wife and I were. My wife was there Sunday, and we were eating lunch on a bench or something. And I just saw William Osman with, I guess, his crew or whatever cameraman. I, I don't really know who these people were, but they looked all looked like vaguely familiar. And um, the weird thing was, it wasn't like I could really see what he's hear what he's saying, but it was close enough I could kind of read his. Um, he just seemed like exactly the same person he is on camera. I guess just from <laughs> just from the way he was just kind of carrying himself. I guess. So, yeah. Well, I uh, think that's the right way to go about this. You know, uh, just being yourself, but a little bit exaggerated. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I think you're right. I seems like we talked to somebody about that. Just about how. He, oh, it was. Um, Look, mum, no computer. Just how he was <laughs> exactly the same person. I mean, oh I, yeah, as we imagined him to be, yeah, yeah. Even I mean, down to just screwing things in during an interview, which uh, you know yeah. we talked about. It's Playing like anybody, any, anybody else, you just tell him, just you know, come on, don't do that. But for some reason, with him, well, yeah, I guess pretty obviously, it's well, that's that's what he does. That's part of his persona. Yeah, his his videos are perfect uh, memory uh, mirror image of his um, of himself. Absolutely. And um, I guess, I, well, Jimmy Dressa was there too. I should I should mention that. I guess he was the probably the the biggest star there. I guess. Um, oh yeah, didn't I get think to, so. Didn't get to talk to him. I um, he was talking to. It was funny. He was talking to somebody I, I do know quite well, and I was kind of hanging by. And I'm like, maybe he'll introduce me to Jimmy Dressa, but he didn't. I'm like, I'm not gonna. You know, it's like a fine line between being friendly and like you know. Thousands of people want to talk to this guy, so I don't want to. Oh yeah, but he's he's expe he's expecting it, you know. That's what he's there for—to be with fans. Yeah, no, you're right. The um, yeah. I mean, his his talk he, was pretty good. He said he said he asked like I I called him a few times and he said like so when now I'm going to be on the podcast, <laughs> but so far I've been too too afraid to invite him. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll have to. I I, I mean, I'm. He seems approachable enough. I. It was interesting. Oh, one yeah. thing he. One thing I, I'm said, sure he's going to come on. Yeah, I, I think that'd be awesome. One thing I thought was interesting, you know, I, I didn't really know what his voice sounded like, and he's got a he definitely a distinct New York accent. Not, I don't know, not overly distinct, but you know, you could tell he was from the area, which is kind of cool. And, yeah, he drinks coffee. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and he was. Um, I don't remember where I'm going with this exactly, but he, he just had some cool stories about like being in the area, and obviously the New York Maker Fair is pretty much, pretty much perfect for him. So that's yeah, it's his home pretty, turf. Pretty neat. So yeah, ex exactly. So <laughs> he, um, you know, two years ago he got uh, he was given this Tormac CNC, and I just sent him an email like, uh, hey, if you need some some cat work for your Tormac, because obviously you, you need cat files to cut something on Tormac, just let me know and I can cut it up for you. He's like, yeah, sh cool. I'm, I, I've got this project that you could do. Like, um, it's a knife. Um, it's like a shop knife. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I do it. So I, I, I created this whole mechanism, printed some prototypes and all, and he planned to cut on his Tormark. And he's like, yeah, I already ordered um, like some raw stock materials. And it was a cool knife, you know, with a retractable Stanley blade. And... But then he never had time to actually do it because he was moving shops and he built this new workshop. And now his buddy, uh, Jacko, whatever, or Jacko, whatever is his channel, he came oh, right, out with right. his own knife and it's really similar. Huh. It's, it's not the same. He didn't copy anything, but now he kind of did it. And now I don't think Jer uh, J Jimmy will ever do it again. <laughs> you know, may bring out his own knife. And uh, yeah, I'm a well, bit that, bummed about it. That is That would bum me out, but... I guess that's I guess that's what's happens. I mean, speaking of you know, speaking of moving being a bit of a disruption, you know, I don't know if it's a sore subject or not. I, I guess you're gonna hopefully you're gonna edit this one. So 
<laughs> no, where's your where is your hydrofoil? I, I gotta oh, I gotta ask. It's in the basement where the workshop is, but currently it's in storage. Like I, I just didn't have the time yet. Um, I will definitely finish it one hundred percent, unless it blows up. But even then, I'll build a new one. I think. Um, so currently, what I need to be doing is building a little test stand, and then testing some props with it. And I tested the prop briefly in the pool, uh, and it was really, really powerful. I could barely hold on to it. It was really sketchy. Um, I, I just attached a motor to a p big piece of metal, and I held the piece of metal by hand, and it had a lot of force. But I, I didn't measure it, so I'm not sure if that's even closely enough or not. <laughs> sure. Well, you know, the, the, that's I next saw, step. I saw that video, and, and the thing that was most surprising to me about that was, you know. <laughs> Living in Florida, I was surprised you have pools in Germany, but I guess <laughs> I guess you do. Well, so, some do, some do. Okay, it's well, not as common, but it's it's getting more and more. You know, the American way of life is going coming over here. Sure, but this well, summer has just been a endless, you know, chain of one step after the other. Like to be able to move my workshop, I needed some new tools, uh, some, some new furniture. So I had to build the furniture. Then I had to bring it over to the new workshop. Then I had to hang it up on the wall. Only then I could move my tools over here. So I had to place to, to put the tools because I don't want to work on the floor and I don't want it to be messy because then I, I can't work at all if everything is just covered in tools. <laughs> then I had to put in lights. I had to order the lights. I had to install them on the ceiling. I had to run wires and all of that. So it was endless step of uh yeah chain of steps but i'm closely getting where i can continue working on a hydrofoil again uh next up i i've got one engineering project right now that i need uh, like for a client that i need to finish and then i've got a little bit more time then i need to empty my trailer because right now it's full of cardboard then i can go to the hardware store buy a giant <laughs> uh like a water barrel and then i can test the props in there so I've got a plan. It just takes a few more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So you know, it's a few more weeks now. Now in Germany, right now it's uh, almost October. So oh, yeah. is it? I imagine the weather is quite nice right now. But uh, in a, in a month or two, okay. you're probably going to need yeah. a dry suit, right? Like you do have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. But I'll test it anyway. The, the cool thing is, I live just 50 meters from the water, like literally 50 meters out of the door, and I'm in the lake. Lake, oh, that's no, it's nice. Is it, yeah, I was wondering yeah, so about that. Where, where you live, that. it looks like a very large, it, it's not salt water, is it? It's a very, is it salt uh, water? No, it's fresh water. No, fresh it's fresh water. water. Okay. And it's really nice. Oh, that's, so, that, sounds, yeah. that sounds awesome. What, what river is it? Is it, is it the uh, Rhine? It's, no, no, no. Rhine is, <laughs> <laughs> Rhine is where Laura Kampf is living at in Cologne. Uh, oh, okay. It's called the, what's it called? It's not the Trave, it's the Wackenitz. The Vakanets. You know, that's, uh, are you sure you live there? Because it took you, it took you way too long to, to know what river <laughs> we've got, you live next We've got to. two rivers in town. <laughs> oh, okay. <difficult. laughs> I'm new here. You have two rivers and a swimming pool in your town. That sounds, yeah. sounds spectacular. <laughs> of course, I, I guess we have thousands of swimming pools here in, here in Florida. So Yeah, your neighborhood looks so interesting. It I, is. I checked it out on, on Google Earth. It's oh, so same with same with yours. I guess it's um, I guess it's always the grass on the other side of the road is not greener but more interesting. I guess. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I think we both have cool nature, but the healthcare here is better. <laughs> well, you know, as you said, we'll we'll uh, we'll talk about that off the air. I guess. <laughs> so. Yeah, we should. <laughs> um, so, what projects did you see on Make a Fair that uh, you found interesting? So it was interesting. I guess probably the most, and, um, or, or, or even 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 like before that. Uh, what does Maker Fair actually like? Maker Fair actually like. That's, like that's is a it all strange booths? question, or is yeah. it uh, is okay. it like a concert more like that that everybody does the same thing at the same time, or is it like a? Okay, that's, that's, I, that's I, a very that's a yeah. very good question because I hadn't really considered it from a from that aspect. So. I guess there's quite a few tents with some people have like projects and like DIY projects like you or I would do. And some people are there from 
say Tormac, for example, laser cutter, laser cutter, um, shops, whatever. Some, some people are very commercial. Some people are not. They just have all these okay. booths, almost, almost like a, um, almost like a fair or flea market, I guess. And then you have, <clears throat> I don't know if you know, I guess you know the term flea market, right? Or is it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. It's okay. the same here. Oh, okay. Same Interesting. Word. <laughs> yeah, that's that's strange, but um, <laughs> anyway. So, um, so you have that, and the uh, at that particular one, they have an indoor space. It is normally it's a New York Science Center, which is almost like a museum, kind of like a kids they can go, you know, play with like I don't know how does wind affect this or what's what's on Mars or whatever. So that's kind of yeah, that's really cool. f- really fits in with that. So so they'll set up some of the booths in there, and then inside they have a main auditorium where they'll have people giving presentations and they also had two two separate stages where somebody was only one i saw in this one stage was somebody's giving me a presentation about about laura which is a very um <clears throat> interesting about technology. laura no not a, well <laughs> that's oh, it's a, not but, laura camp no well yeah so i saw L- laura Kampf was on one stage which was the diy creator stage along with bob claggett uh jimmy Dresta, and so, some other people at various times so they had them them all going i thought that was a good format at the other yeah. stage they were talking about maybe i don't know if it was all more technical aspects but they were talking about laura like laura wan or sig fox which i think is maybe more common in europe no idea what you're talking about Okay, it's a it's like a Wi-Fi. It's it's like a Wi-Fi signal, but it's very long range, but it's very low. Low uh, ra. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Laura wins. No. So we're wide access network. Okay. I guess. Okay. Now I get it. But yeah, so, I still don't know really what it is. <laughs> well, I didn't either. That's why I went to the thing. I've been trying to figure it out for the last year or so. It's very um. It seems like a very exciting technology, very Internet of Things type deal. But you look up the, if you Google it, you'll get this, you usually get this kind of presentation like, Laura is a thing that will help farmers integrate better better crop management. Oh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. And like, look, I just want the details. I don't really care about, you know, somebody running through the woods and with a fun expression and you know, you know what I'm talking about. You yeah. try to look up information. I know these horrible videos that you find on Instagram, like from Tech Insider and stuff like that. Like, oh, this will revolutionize farming, or this is a new way to generate power. <laughs> right. <laughs> or just just today I saw from uh, I think it was Business Insider, no Tech Insider. It was now you can finally work out in a hot tub. Well, I've, I've, never, a, I've never wanted to work yeah. out in a hot tub. <laughs> yeah, they put an exercise bike in a hot tub. I don't know what that is for, <laughs> but I sort of like, like it's the best thing since sliced bread. Bread. <laughs> well, I guess I guess if you're into that, I um, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so yeah, but uh, but anyway, that's what Maker Fair is like. I mean, not the not the okay, working out so in the hot tubs. A bit of entertainment, bit of showcase, bit of education. Exactly. So whatever you want to find. Oh, they also had a um, like a ra- power cars racing series. They had these people that were making like um, power wheels into actual race cars. They had some sort of track off to the side too. So pretty much anything. Small, you, small power cars. Very, like, very small power cars. Tiny. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if you had those in Germany, but they had like power wheels. Um, yeah, we've got hot, hot wheels. We've got. Okay. But like. Like you can um, you can ride in them like they're not. What am I what, trying to no, say? No, no. Well, in, in yours you can ride in them, the ones you've seen. Yeah, like like Power Wheels. They're like these little little um, toys little for kids. kids. Buggies? Yeah, little yeah, kids I know buggy. them. Yeah, okay. yeah. I had yeah. a police bike. Yeah. Okay. So like uh, like adults will take these and make them into like racing racing cars that they can race oh, around that and sounds stuff. Cool. Yeah, it looks it looks like fun. So, so we'll. See. I, yeah, I didn't the get to watch problem about that in Germany, we've got really strict laws on what you can ride on the road. And it's just bikes and cars. And anything apart from that, like electric scooters or Segways, you can't ride on the road. Yeah, and that makes sense. And if you get sense. caught, you're in big trouble. 
Like even they, just an electric scooter, you can lo lose your driving license for that. Or like something forever, forever. Or? Well, yeah, it's like they. If the police wants to, they can say, yeah, you were driving a vehicle that was not registered, not insured, and you didn't have a license for it. Hmm. So they they act like it's a car that you built yourself. <laughs> right. That makes so, sense. It's really strict. It's um. <clears throat> sometimes you'll see people driving golf carts around here but you know on the major highways you don't see that's allowed you can drive a golf cart in your neighborhood yeah around i mean i don't know i think it's one of those things that police kind of overlook i mean personally i think it's kind of annoying but you don't you don't <laughs> see. it's not first world problems it's floridian floridian problems it's a very floridian problem you're, you're absolutely right but i think Old even more is driving their golf carts no, that's exactly right. They have these <laughs> these retirement communities, and people. Will, I mean, some of them are some some communities are actually planned for golf courts, just just using your golf courts all the time. And um, in fact, in fact, I went to the gas station the other day, and there was somebody parked in the the parking lot, and it was uh, it was like a golf cart. I'm like, what's this guy doing? He had like a you know, not to get into politics of it whatsoever, but he had a some sort of like face of sticker Donald Trump. On it? No, not okay. a sticker. He had like a yeah, like a. He likes golf. He likes golfing. He likes yes. golf, and either liked or hated Donald Trump. I'm not sure why. Because instead of they had, a, he had like a head of Donald <laughs> Trump on it. It was it was very strange. I, I'm guessing he didn't like him, but that's who knows. Who knows? <laughs> so, Florida, it's it's fifty fifty. It's fifty fifty. That that's right. So yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> but but at the Maker Fair, I don't think they had a lot of golf carts. If we were if we were wondering that, but they did have a. Um, <clears throat> I did see some interesting thing, things there. I guess. Um, I, I guess one of the one of the neat things I saw that maybe maybe wouldn't have popped up on most people's radar was this thing called a, a ro roto mill. And these people, a roto mill. They call it a ro they're calling it a roto mill, and it's not like a product or anything. Because I, I went, I'm like, oh, okay, how much are these? And like, we're not selling them. These are our senior engineering design project. And what it is, I, I'm is, wondering right now what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, like, does it grind? Does it grind coffee? Is it a CNC that turns on the spot? Well, it's it's a, it's basically a CNC turning center. <clears throat> It's it's almost like a, a lathe. It is is a lathe, but instead of instead of working in the traditional cutting way of a lathe, it's got a got a router set up on the top of it on a two axis gantry. So the lathe is, is okay. controlled by a stepper motor, and the two axis gantry is controlled as well. So I think you can, or actually maybe it's a three axis gantry. I it's it said three axes of control, but it okay. It can control how, how much it rotates very precisely. But it can also control the the head, which is actually just a a, a cutter, like a a mill or mill. So it's a, like a your, it's like a free access CNC with a rotary table. Yeah, it's exactly like that. So yeah, I guess it is. It is pretty. Hmm. I guess I reinvented that. So it's. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not doing a good job of describing it. But it it looks looks and actually has. I think it may have the same spindle as my CNC or my, my manual lathe. But instead of being turned by a motor, it's turned by a by a stepper motor. And then on top it's got a got a router that can, you know, like you said, act act like a act like a CNC machine. I, I yeah. thought it was very very clever because you'll have you'll have full turning centers which can actuate both both the workpiece and the cutting head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, this yeah. this kind of takes out the takes out some of the complexity. So they're saying you can make these for about two thousand. So it's a DIY thing. It's a oh, DIY that's cool. thing. That what they're saying they say like yeah we're gonna put all the all the stuff up on you know open source and stuff. He's like the thing is you probably couldn't build it for as cheap as we could probably build it at some point. So yeah, which which makes sense. But we'll we'll see so where that. So what's what does this st uh, structure made out of? It's is it welded steel or aluminium plates? They had a the exterior of it is is just sheet metal. The interior is, um, I think they used a water jet on some of it. It's 
Yeah. It's a real really solid looking machine. I was I was shocked that it's an engineering project. It's they said <laughs> anyway, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what this could this could be in the future. Because you couldn't really use it as a traditional lathe because the the uh, spindle is only only spinning to like three RPM. But you can you can you can position it position your workpiece at any uh -huh. place. Yeah. You can you make any sort of key you want really. The only thing you can't do is is I mean, I, I guess you could do it very slowly. Is if you wanted to center, center drill a, a rod, you couldn't couldn't do that. But that's it's pretty. I don't know. I guess you could buy a manual lathe for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I uh, I bought a lathe. I I got it on an auction. Um, if I remembered correctly, I got the email that I won the auction on eBay while we had our last podcast. Yeah, and it arrived. And it's it's super tiny. It weighs like fifty kilograms, um, but it works. It's super super hand, handy to have. But I need to take everything apart, clean it, um, and then adjust it so everything is fair and square. Yeah, that's. Um, I've yet to, I've yet to really tune up my Harbor Freight lathe to make it, make it make it really good. I, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, just not something I put the time in yet. But it works yeah. for works for sanding stuff and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, the physics anonymous guys, they tune up their tools, but they don't do any real projects apart from building their tools. Yeah, that's always an interesting thing. It's like, you know, you were talking about having to set up your workshop and everything else. And it's like, how much time do you spend setting up your workshop versus actually doing doing projects? And that's, you know, it's, it's like, you know, you, you, you built a CNC router, but yeah. do you think you've spent more time? You think it saved you more time than it took oh, you yeah. to build it? Yeah, well, no, I built it in two months. So that was quick, much quicker than the hydrofoil. But then I was oh. still a student, so I had more time. I didn't have to make money. <laughs> sure. But <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about building a new one eventually, like a really, really solid and hefty one. Or I could just buy a Tormac, you know. Yeah, you could. They're only what ten thousand dollars or so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know what they yeah. go for, but yeah, ten thousand is about right. Okay, they are nice. I mean, yeah. they're nice. I, I hope you get by, what you by pay that for, time, I I'm big enough that they sponsor one, like they did for Jimmy, Jimmy the Resta. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully. Well, so, what's your uh, what's your subscriber count up to these days? You seem like you've been growing uh, pretty well. Fifteen thousand seven hundred fifty. Yeah, it was okay. Wow, that's great. Okay, but... and, and yours? It's uh, like 1,900. So, you know, it's about oh, a tenth, tenth you, of what you, you are. I think you doubled from last year. Yeah, no, I have I have doubled in about a year. So I guess if, um, yeah, if you, you go at that right, pace right path. in 30 years, I'll have several billion subscribers, right? So or that's Yeah, not... <laughs> yeah. All the people on Earth and Elon Musk crew on Mars. <laughs> that's right. So... It's it's interesting. It's it's. I've seen this picture yesterday on, on Reddit where somebody uh, got his new uh, Tesla Model Three, and it was like a sandstorm was in there. Ha, ha, must have been in there. Like he opened the door and everything was covered in sand. And this is how the dealership delivered his car. Really? Well, that's um, <laughs> that's not good. So. No. <laughs> I, I guess they used it where they simulated the rockets from Mars. <laughs> you know, at a, but that's off topic. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But the, it's it's interesting though. So, um, yeah. Oh, and I got a drill press, uh, also an auction. And first, I thought it was a really good deal. I paid 150 euros for it, and knew it's about 400. But then something was rattling in there, so I had to replace all the bearings. And I repainted the whole thing. And what did I change now? And I had to uh, change the chuck. So that was another 60 euros. So overall, I got it for about half price, but I also had probably four hours of work. Hmm. So I, I should have just bought a new one, really. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's always the, the that's always a debate, you know, because it's like, well, you know, in, in my mind, you know, you and I both work for ourselves and it's like, well, you know, I, I feel bad for, Sending 50 bucks on this, I could just do it myself. But then it's like, well, you know, it's going to take me three hours and the price of my labor. 
I guess I better just yep. just buy it, you know. But that's yep. it's hard to get out. It's hard to get out of that mindset sometimes. But you know, you gotta gotta be efficient at some point. Yeah, so I'm I'm not doing that again. You know, I could have been really lucky, and the thing could have been brand new because I didn't know from the pictures. Um, or I could have got something that's completely broken, just a piece of garbage. <laughs> and I got something in between, but uh, hmm. overall, I wouldn't do it. I, I mean, I, I didn't make a loss or anything like that, but it wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have a milling machine, though, don't you? Uh, no, it's it's just my CNC that I have. Oh, okay. Because I was wondering why you wanted a, a drill press, but yeah, that makes, yeah. makes sense. Well, yeah, this is a big drill press uh, and has lots of power. So it's finally something that doesn't get stuck all the time, like <laughs> my small okay. mill. <laughs> the drills would get stuck in the workpiece and I felt like, man, this is something that I actually use to make money with. It's embarrassing that I have such a small <laughs> drill press. <laughs> sure. Well, you, you know, I was wondering about, about that, the uh, the milling machine and drill press and stuff. So when I was at the Maker Fair, L Laura Kampf, she was talking about how she got a bridge port, which is, which is great, you know, a milling, milling wow. machine. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's what I learned on. But... Uh, the thing is, bridge ports are excellent machines, maybe, maybe the best milling machines. You know, they are mm -hmm. the standard, but I guess I would They're have thought... all it, over the world. I, I guess I would have thought as, as much as Germans uh, pride themselves in their engineering, I would have thought there was a... Isn't there a German uh, I don't milling think machine? So. Brand? Really? I don't think so. Our, the cool lathes that we have, they come from Switzerland and they are called... can't think of the name right now, but... Yeah, there are lots of cool lathes uh, from Switzerland, and then they, we've got bridge ports. So huh. that's the two we have. That's and very, I think from that's Austria, lots of stuff from Austria. But we, I can't think of a German bridge port. Right. And I think for us, like hobby <laughs> machinists, it's difficult to buy. It, it will be even more difficult to buy things like that because no company is uh, buying new mills anymore uh, or new lathes. They just buy CNC. Everything is CNC nowadays. Yeah, I, I suppose you're right about that. Hmm. Yeah, then so that's, we can that's... only buy the stuff from the 70s. We can't buy a mill from the 90s. <laughs> I mean, you can from Harbor Freight or Grizzly, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting, too. A place I used to work, they... Well, actually, more than one place I used to work. They would go to, go to Italy for a lot of their heavy like stamping machinery and some other um like heavy mach heavy machining stuff the, one mm -hmm. one of the machines was called a porta from porta italy or something and i i thought the machines were not that great myself because i had to work on them a lot and um <laughs> <laughs> but but they they always referred you know my boss was like well you know they're like a ferrari they they work extremely well when they do work and then they don't work when they don't want to work and i yeah. i think i'd agree with that quite a bit um yeah it's you know, like my ultimaker it's super fun if it runs and if it prints for 20 hours straight and something comes out of it but you know if the first layer gets screwed up on every single try it's just super annoying and you think what a piece of garbage <laughs> <laughs> you know i've got a i bought a 200 dollar um what is it a, yeah i i saw the video about it it's, it's, I mean, for the price, it's spectacular. I, I've yet to have any problems with it. Actually, I did have a problem with it today because the, the bed finally started com coming off a little bit, the, the surface, which, <laughs> but, you know, they, they said that was the real problem before, but this is after several months of printing. So I'm not, overall, I'm pretty happy about how that held up, but. Yeah, for, sounds for good. Now, what model is it for the, for the listeners? It's the. Uh, Mono Price Minis Maker Select Mini or M Maker Price. Anyway, it's a Select Mini 3D Good printer. enough. Yeah, good enough. They'll be able to Google, <laughs> they Google, can it, Google it whatever they feel like. <laughs> so, are you, are you endorsing this? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll say I'll officially. Uh, I, I'd say I really like it. I guess I don't. I'm not a. I'm not paid to endorse it. I guess if that's what you're asking. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not getting paid. Yeah, so that's right. You should, and and actually <laughs> become actually, our patrons. <laughs> when you, I'll, I will say this: I don't want to pump it up too. I don't want to endorse them too much because when I log on to it with Octoprint, it says something about a fire hazard and there being bad firmware in it or something. <laughs> so, 
it's worked well so far, but just take that with a grain of salt, I suppose. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah. Well, we we've really been going on and on about a uh, stuff. I thought we were going to talk about the Maker Fair. We had all kinds of cool stuff to talk about. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's you know we haven't talked in like three months. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. So, um, it was unbelievable. This summer was so much stuff that I did. Thinking, yeah. thinking back that's yeah yeah no, but it's been... now i'm i'm set up for lots of more videos workshop is really functioning you know it's so nice that i've got places to put things i don't have to store everything on the floor <laughs> yeah no, that's, that's great I, and i can um, work on two projects at the same time that's super nice so now your subscribers on youtube can expect expect your your output level yeah, and how good your da stuff daily is. videos daily videos <clears throat> is promised mm -hmm. from you and it's going to be it's going to be amazing right daily vlog yeah i do live streams of me screwing up stuff in the workshop oh do you do you really <laughs> yeah no. i guess i was like i guess i haven't been paying attention to your, <laughs> to your stuff as much as i should have <laughs> man last last week i was in the workshop at like two o'clock at night i think and it was like one solution that i had for a particular pro problem didn't work so i tried something else i didn't have the right materials i didn't have the right tools at the moment because i broke one drill bit that i needed so now I was tapping a hole an m10 hole with an and the hole was eight millimeters normally it should be 8.5 oh. millimeters so it was super hard to tap it and the vice wasn't screwed down to the workbench yet it was just resting on it and I had one clamp because I can't put two clamps on it. <laughs> and it was slipping and it was turning. It was just super hard. I was like, what the hell am I doing here? Like if my subscribers could see this, they would stop writing stuff like, oh, you're such a genius on my videos. <laughs> <laughs> because I added like weeks of work down to 10 minutes and they just see the good parts. They don't yeah. see me screwing around with a stupid vice and a hole that's too small to tap. <laughs> I, I know what you mean because it's like sometimes my projects I'll get done with it I'm like okay that's cool and you know you got like three hours worth of footage and probably much more from you from what I've from what I gather from your process, from <laughs> yeah, your process. I don't do that anymore <laughs> um, but I, I feel like it's more like well you know you live near the ocean so I, or near the water at least so I, yeah, I feel yeah. like it's more like it's more like deboning the um, cleaning fish you're just trying to get get the tiny little good parts out of the you know, yeah. separate the <laughs> of the, the big crap. mess of disgusting stuff. <laughs> exactly, or uh, maybe more like <laughs> cleaning crabs, which I'm not too good at. But if you've ever had to do yeah, that, that's I, tedious. Well, no, I've never did. I don't like crabs. I I don't eat them really. Okay, well that, that's okay. Yeah, to, to each yeah. his own, I suppose. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> of. From time to time, I, I smash a workpiece into my miter saw because sometimes my miter saw catches on work pieces. Like I, I, cu I cut a lot of aluminum on it. So if it catches a piece of aluminum, it slams it into the fence and the fence bends. And then I know like, oh, crap. Now it's another at least half an hour to fix the bend, to adjust everything again. It's just wasted time. Sure. Have, now, have you ever thought about using al aluminum instead for your material? Well, but I'm using aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to think about that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. Good one. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was a. It was a. <laughs> I'm not gonna What's the worst mishap that happened to you in your workshop? Uh, I'm trying to think. Actually, I had um, I don't know if you watched till the very end of my my latest video, but I ended up not not um not holding a work piece down correctly. I was like, I can just use my finger there and end up dr drilling into it with into my finger, and then in the oh. next in the next scene, actually, I don't even think I showed it till the end. But it's like at one point in the video, my thumb is fine, and then you see the next point in the video, you've, it's got a bunch of um. A bunch of tape around it because <laughs> no. I, I didn't 
you know, I, I go into the bathroom and I've I've got all you know all this blood all over the all over the workbench. So I go into the bathroom and <laughs> you know my wife's not there. I'm like I'm not sure where she has the band aids. And I found <laughs> I think it was part of a part of a Swiffer, like something used to clean the floor, <laughs> and then yeah. some athletic tape. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it worked fine. So uh, you know, and it wasn't wasn't bad enough. You know, I needed stitches or something, but it wasn't didn't feel good either. either. Oh crap! Now what what about yourself? How it's, how can you accidentally drill into your hand? It was just a, on the drill press. No, it was a, a hand drill. Oh, and free I was, hand. Okay, I was holding. I yeah. was I was trying to hold it because I'm like I've got oh. some wires in here. I need to hold the wires back. So I yeah. held the wires. And you back. think you can stop? In yeah, time before you, you, you reach your hand, you think you can, but you can't. But you can't. I did that. And that's, oh, you've done okay. God, that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> you know, on the drill press on the left side, they have this uh, little uh, spring that um, lifts your drill, the, the, the quill back up. You right. know, if, if you, you have to pull to put, put the quill down, and then it retracts automatically. And that's done by a spring. So the spring is like a wound up piece of metal. And I mine didn't have one. So I bought one on Amazon and came and I installed it and you have to wind it up really tightly and it was super sharp because it just cost two euros and it was probably straight from China. And <laughs> winding that thing up with the sharp edge and then it, all the time you would slip and it would spin around violently. My hand had a tiny oh. cut but it was bleeding profoundly. And the drill, drill press I had spray painted white that uh, it had lots of blood on it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was also late at night and I was like what am I doing here I should have just bought one like I'm a yeah. professional supposed to be I should just buy professional tools instead of buying hobby tools or use tools that professionals used to use yeah well that's, that's not that's not always such a bad thing the, the second method what you're talking about <laughs> yeah. I mean you know good quality used tools that's sometimes a good a good way to go I, I think Yeah, yeah, something. If you, if you can okay. find them, so, I know you know physics. <laughs> When I went to these uh, physics anonymous, you know their workshop slash slash house. Yeah, um, yeah, the, had, the man had, cave. The man cave. The the giant. That was... I'm surprised they have they have girlfriends giving the state of their bedroom. You know, to those that don't know, the, uh, not their bedroom, their living room. They have got a giant climbing wall in the living room. Yeah, it's it's quite it's quite nice. Um, and then all the for, other for, bedrooms are for for people that like this stuff. All the other bedrooms, like in the first, the, in the the foyer, they have surfboards and bikes, and then there's a pool table that had a, a pump, <laughs> pumpkin, <laughs> pumpkin that was rigged up some some fire fire thing, and then in the bedrooms they had laser cutters and you know the garage they had garage <laughs> stuff of course, but yet they had an air conditioner which was pretty nice. So okay, so not all people have air conditioning in in Florida. Well, very. Pretty much everybody has air conditioning in their house, but they had an air conditioning in their garage. Oh, wow. which is quite the luxury. Okay. So yeah. maybe I'll maybe I'll get that eventually. <laughs> uh, so, well, do you uh, you think you want to wrap it up? I guess I don't, I don't want to make it. Too, yeah, I think too long, so. I, I mean, I yeah, we <laughs> we discussed all the important bits. I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I, what's up? What's up next for you? What have you got planned until Christmas? So I, I guess the biggest thing I'm um, working on, or I guess not working on, I've got a, I've got a, a light fixture that I made that it'll should be pretty cool. Actually, by the time this gets out, maybe it'll I'll have a video about it. It's got a, um, it's sound reactive. So when you, when you say something, it'll get up to you know from from green to red, kind of a kind of like a stack light. And my inspiration okay. for this, my inspiration for this was, you know, the children. They, my, I've got two kids, and sometimes they'll start to get loud and stuff. So you say, you know, be, you say, you say, be quiet. Well, what, what does that even mean? That's that's a very that's a very meaningless term. So I was thinking, you know, I could make I could make the stack light so that it's you know green, yellow, and then if it gets to red, that's like the punishment light. It just stays there, and they know that they're going to get punished. I, <laughs> but you know, describing it and thinking about it after I was always making it, like this sounds extremely cruel. So I'll probably not actually do that, but the the, the end product is very cool, even if the um, <laughs> even if the thinking is kind of it's kind of strange. <laughs> I, I don't know. Does that seem like a 
a weird way to yeah, do it. Yeah, you, you could tie it to their phones <clears throat> and make them lose credit on the app store so they can't play games anymore. <laughs> right. Well, they're foreign too, so they don't, they don't know about that yet. They, they don't know about that yet? They're behind. Maybe, maybe they are. I don't... They, I don't, they yeah. don't have their own phones yet? I don't know if you're joking or not. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Okay. I, was like, okay. I don't know. Maybe German kids I get, get phones with for. They're quite, a, quite te technically adept usually. So I guess. Well, I have no idea about kids. So <laughs> you shouldn't even talk to me about this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I was thinking I could get some advice from you on that. What do you What do you think? I, I oh yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm 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 a great parent. Well, I heard you had to take care of a I'm child. I'm 28. This... I live on my own. I've got no responsibilities. Well, I heard you had to take care of a, a kid for about three minutes this weekend. Oh so... yeah, that that was super nice, super nice. I really liked that kid for the first few seconds, and after that it was a rapid decline because it started making noises for no good reason. <laughs> And yeah. luckily, it was just like three minutes. So, <laughs> so I would some, do it again, though. So, <laughs> some some people say, you know, when kids scream or cry or whatever, they want something. And I think sometimes that's true. But I think sometimes they just want to want to scream. You know, it's, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I think she, I think she just wanted her mom, which was like five meters away from me. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I guess I guess the important <laughs> I guess the important thing with me maybe not maybe certainly not all dads but my wife tends to uh, she tends to be more the authority on what what is appropriate for, for children and what isn't so okay okay a, you, you know I guess um what what are the things that you dispute about what are the things? oh man that's that's I really just pretty much agree with her on all points. It's well, you know, one thing <laughs> that's is that's the right answer. Yeah, that's that's right. right. It was a test. Your wife tasked me to ask this question. Oh, thank you. I'm sure she should appreciate that when she listens to the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I will say it's you know my one rule is let's keep the kids out of the one half of the garage with all my dangerous tools and such. So that's uh. <laughs> yeah, but all joking aside, I think we can both agree that our partners are the best we can ever imagine, and they're always right. Absolutely, that's that's that is true. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Very cool. Well, uh, well all right. Max, what, I guess. Well, what? Uh, now, what? What have you been working on? Oh well, it's just you know paid work. Um, opposite to YouTube because I don't really get paid for YouTube. <laughs> Got right. free Patreons. It would be nice if I had more. Uh, so I'm doing paid work, which is also nice because it pays my bills. Uh, and once I'm done with that, I'll finish the hydrofoil and I need to build a bed because right now I just have an IKEA mattress lying on the floor. Well, I can't wait to see that. And once you get that mattress, certainly you'll be more yeah. efficient anyway when having a I, I take sleep, inspiration right? from the bed that, yeah, that uh, you build for your son. <laughs> oh well, well thanks so much it's uh he's he has enjoyed that so hopefully you'll enjoy whatever whatever spawns off of that i guess so yeah <laughs> uh well it's been great talking to you and uh i guess it'll be great cool to, talking to you so. i i hope we can um queue up a guest for next week if you guys uh, listeners have got any suggestions for guests just send us an email and we try to invite them anybody you find interesting you know this is arts and engineering uh today we didn't really talk about art but uh if you know somebody cool that we should talk about just send us an email yeah absolutely and, then and can, any other feedback sure and you can get in touch with me my my twitter is at jeremy s cook and on youtube i'm jeremy s cook now what about you where do they actually send the email i guess that's that's the question max Oh, the email. It's uh, max.maker333 at gmail.com. Or you can yeah, you can find me on YouTube and on Instagram and on Twitter. It's maxmaker YouTube on Instagram. And Jeremy, it's... Oh, yeah, you have to decide if you name your email. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. You can... Um, let's see. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's hi at jeremyscook.com. So, you know, I think that... Hi? I think that yeah, hi. Like... I mean, what what am I supposed to Jeremy at jeremyscook dot com? That seems kind of seems kind of silly. Ah, oh, now I get it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think yeah. hello. I think or, hello or is like also like normal people. They just write 
info at Jeremy S. Cook. Oh, that's true. Is that or, how the, is that how they do, or, do it in Germany? In Germany? Yeah. Or um, Jeremy at scook.com. That's true. I don't think that's a... Anyway, that's... Uh, anyway, my email address is hi at jeremyscook.com if you want to get in touch with me. So that's whether I register enough. another one, we'll, we'll have to see. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. See you next week. But we all know it's not going to be next week. Bye-bye. See ya.